I'm Paul Abrams, Professor of Urology at the University of Bristol and Bristol Urological Institute. We dealt with some difficult cases this afternoon and I suppose the common theme was uh, patient choice and patient opinion. So we had a woman with uh, a problem avoiding after stress incontinence surgery and a man with symptoms whether or not he was obstructed. The woman was, the woman was interesting because she'd had two tapes put in and then the tapes had eroded and they'd been replaced with a fascial sling. And following this, she couldn't void. But in fact, when one went into the history, although she couldn't void and was dependent on intermittent catheterization, the thing that bothered her was the fact she also had symptoms suggestive of detrusor overactivity with urgency incontinence, which she found very embarrassing. Now this was confirmed on urodynamics and we had a very interesting discussion about whether the sling should be taken down or whether the, she should be treated for her overactive bladder. In the end, we all agreed that it was a patient choice thing. She was taking the risk that if the sling was taken down, then her stress incontinence might recur. But she was dry, and so she in fact elected to have further medical treatment and po possibly botulinum toxin. The second case was an older man who came demanding a TURP, which is a bit unusual in the English context. Most people want to try tablets first. Anyway, we explained that we needed a little bit more evidence and he had a, a flow rate which didn't look quite right. It was low, uh, but it was a bit suspicious. And we did pressure flow studies and this confirmed that the low flow was due to detrusor underactivity, a weak bladder rather than prostatic obstruction. We then had a very good discussion about how one assesses that using the bladder obstruction index, the bladder contractility index, and bladder voiding efficiency. And then again, it turned to what the man really wanted. He didn't have dangerous symptoms, he had annoying symptoms. I should have added, he also had nocturnal polyuria, which is of course not related to prostatic obstruction and not related to truser underactivity. So we gave him advice for that. But beyond that, then he had a choice of perhaps using intermittent catheterization because he had some residual urines and therefore this would reduce his frequency. So the theme really was making an accurate diagnosis. And if it's not a dangerous situation and it's not likely to progress, then the patient has a choice very frequently in a variety of lower urinary tract dysfunctions.